Yeah, that's just how it goes. So you're just gonna have nice to have somebody else off. in the room here. <laughs> 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 now you have an audience. <laughs> <laughs> it's good though, right? There you go. Yeah. 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 We're we're live, so we will begin and we will open uh, I guess with apologies if there's anybody out there uh, waiting for the meeting to start. We had some technology glitches here, but we're up and running now, so we will uh, we will move forward. Uh, with the call to order, uh, the uh, I should acknowledge, I guess, uh, for the record, who is who is here uh, in the council chambers, along with uh, with myself as chair of planning board. We have uh, uh, members of planning board, Councillor Ramsey and Councillor Adams, as well. Uh, your Worship, uh, Mayor Stewart, is uh, has is the other member of Planning Board, and uh, he is joining by a, by a Zoom, as well. I believe we have Councillor Campbell, Snow, McDougal, and McComan on Zoom, as uh, also uh, directors uh, Mike Tatuska, Director Aaron McDonald, Deputy CAO Gordon McFarland are on as well as uh, in the council chambers as well is uh, uh, Nicole Morrison uh, from the public and uh, in the boardroom, I believe downstairs, we have Alex Zoe, Fiona Lou, Robert E. Bear, and uh, uh, Linda Stevenson from our staff. So did I miss anybody there? And, oh, excuse me, uh, Brian Harlick, who keeps us on track here on a daily basis is in council chambers as well. So I hope I didn't miss anybody there. Um, silence uh, would indicate not, I guess. So we will move on with the approval of agenda. So if we could have a, a motion to approve the agenda, moved by Councillor Ramsey, seconded by Councillor Adams, uh, that the agenda be approved as circulated. All those in favor say aye. 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 Contrary. A motion carried. Our first order of business is a mobile stale, uh, sales establishment uh, from Viva Dagger. Um, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. So the recommendation, and it's in relation to 160 Heather Moist Drive mobile sales establishment. Supporting explanation, the purpose. The purpose of the application is to allow a mobile sale establishment Viva La Crepe to operate at 160 Heather Moist Drive, Summerside Port Authority lands. From June to October, weather permitting, Ms. Dagger pr proposes hours of operation are uh, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Sunday. Uh, background, this is Ms. Dagger's sixth year applying for a mobile sales establishment license, and to date there have been no issues with her business. The location being proposed is owned by the Summerside Port Corporation, Inc. at 160 uh, uh, Heather Moist Drive. I think, Linda, this is uh, similar to the other ones that we've dealt with. They're still trying to finalize the location on, on the uh, uh, harbor front uh, uh, owned, uh, the Port Authority's owned, uh, owned lands at this yes, point. That, yes, that's correct. Uh, mobile and the, uh, mobile sale establishment means a business located in a motorized vehicle or a movable structure that is towed or moved by a motorized vehicle and where all of the goods, wares, or foodstuff that are offered for sale are contained entirely within the motorized vehicle or a movable structure, but does not include a lunch truck. Uh, report under the uh, section 13 of the City of Summerside Licensing Bylaw SS-05. The bylaw states the following. In section 13, uh, mobile sales establishment license. A, any person or company seeking a license to operate a mobile sales establishment in the city shall make application therefore to council. B, licenses may be granted for a mobile sales establishment to conduct business on the maximum of two locations in the city and each application mm -hmm. shall be accompanied by a letter of permission from the owner of the property on which the mobile sales establishment will be located. C. Council shall allow or refuse the application based upon considerations of safety, 
desirability, impact on established businesses in the city, public convenience, and such other considerations as it deems appropriate. D, Council may attach terms and conditions to the approval of the license if granted, including but not limited to one hours and day of operation, two health code requirements, three litter control, and four approved locations. E, the license for a mobile sales establishment uh, shall be valid for the calendar year in which the application is made only. A new application is required to Council for each calendar year. And F, no appeal shall lie from a decision of council respecting a mobile sales establishment license. Staff comments, Ms. Dagger will provide written permission from the Summerside Port Authority, Inc. for the 160 Heather Moist Drive location. And the recommendation, technical service staff recommend council approve the mobile sales establishment license to the applicant. Viva Dagger to operate the Viva La Crepe at 160 Heather Moist Drive, owned by the Summerside Port Corporation, Inc. The planning board recommendation, whether carried or defeated, will be brought forward uh, for council mm -hmm. for a final decision. So the planning board recommendation, this application bears the recommendation of the planning board, and I would call for a mover and a seconder for that motion. Moved by Councillor Ramsey, seconded by Councillor Adams, I apologize for my back. Yeah. Councillor Adams, uh, and we will open the floor for any comments or discussions or questions. I have one question. Councillor Ramsey has a question. And I come here, do I? Right? No, the mic, they can hear you. Oh, my good. Okay, I guess I just have my question is that it's for 160 Heather Moist Drive, location wise, but. We weren't, they weren't giving out locations in the past. Is that something that has changed? Um, re remember the other yeah. applicants were waiting for um, addresses. So I just wondered what, if something has changed there that yeah, we weren't aware that's, of. That's a fair question. Linda, can you provide some insight to that? Sure. Um, so yeah, the board have decided that they're going to locate them uh, somewhere east of Shargis. So that there's still the setup, the exact setup's not uh, not uh, in stone yet, but they will be in that area, somewhere between the wharf and Sharpies. Okay, thanks, Linda. Okay, okay. thanks. Brian. Thanks, Linda. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions or comments? I know we'll be getting calls from Deputy Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councillor McFeely. I, I know that I ask this question every time there's a mobile application, but I think it's important in light of COVID-19 restrictions and guidelines, I realize that it is the Port Authority, the Summerside Port Authority, but I'm wondering about washroom facilities because we are hearing an awful lot about washing of hands and community spread. And last season, I did hear from people that if they had young children or whatnot, there wasn't a place for children to go to the washroom. So I wanna make sure that that's noted. I believe Ms. Stevenson mentioned to me that that is with the Department of Health, but I believe as a city, I wanna make sure that that's mentioned, uh, that we're aware of it. I'm not against the license. I just wanna make it noted that we've asked that question about washrooms and uh, facility for people to wash their hands. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, Linda, any comment there? Uh, again, the requirements for washrooms are for staff. It's like any takeout where if it's a takeout restaurant. Not getting the sound here. Is Miss Stevenson still talking? I think she froze. Okay. Back on now. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, if I, I may, then be speaking. If I may, uh, I, I realize that it's for for the facility uh, staff and employees. Again, I'm just making the point that. 
we are very aware and mindful of restrictions. And I'm wondering if the Summerside Port Authority is going to provide some type of facilities for customers, paying customers that are, are you know, accessing food orders and things like that because of community spread. I think you're okay now there, Linda, I think. There's again, there's no requirement under our bylaw for that, and I do not know if the port are offering washrooms for those vendors for their patrons. We're, we're somewhat restricted by our bylaw, and that I, I, I would think if there's no provision or no requirement in the bylaw, uh, I don't know how we would, other than to ask the question, uh, how we can enforce that, Deputy Mayor. I guess that's all I'm asking. As I say, I'm not against the license, but uh, because it is the city that's issuing the license it, as we move forward, I do think it's incumbent on us to ask the question if of the Port Authority, are they going to supply some type of washroom facilities for some of these mobile establishments? Because we could have our knuckles wrapped if we're issuing a license, but there's not a washroom for people to use. Yeah. Point taken, Deputy Councillor Adams. Yeah, there is there is facilities at Spinnakers that could service that area that they're talking about, and I noticed uh, Councillor McDougall had your hand up there as well. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor McFeely. Uh, mine is just more of a concern than. Uh, any objection. I support the food trucks and uh, but I go back to to every time there's an application. We're not just applying uh, uh, allowing one uh, mobile establishment. We're allowing another one to carry their wares. So we have are we having three down there now? There's three that yeah. are clustered there now I believe. Yeah so uh, yeah I, I just concerned about uh, the look of our waterfront, and as long as it's orderly and uh, well kept, I'm okay. Yeah, that's that's a good point, Councillor. Any other questions or comments? Uh, I think the washroom one is a valid one, and uh, I can certainly, I guess, search out what's in the in the area there. But certainly, uh, Councillor Adams' suggest, suggestion that. Uh, Spinnakers is relatively close there is a is, is, is a good solution there. Possibly, possibly Councillor McFeely, if there could be a sign posted near the uh, the mobiles so that people know that they, they can use those washrooms. I think that's important. Is that something uh, Ms. Stevenson that we can explore with the Port Authority? We can, we can explore it, but again, we can't enforce we can't, it because we don't. We don't. Yeah, under, because we don't. Understood. Understood. Is, is Spinnaker's, oh, sorry, Brian, if I can. Councillor Snow. Is Spinnaker's owned by the Port, Port Authority? Yes. Yeah, okay. I just, I knew there was others involved in the past, so I just wanted to make sure there was, okay. Are we ready for the question? Planning Board. Yeah. The recommendations in front of us. So, uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Contrary. Motion carried. Okay. The next item on the agenda is a uh, recommendation regarding a uh, an application by Home Plus Real Estate Limited, uh, looking for a preliminary approval. The supporting explanation, the purpose, subdivide PID number 663138 to 12.3 acre site, creating nine lots. The planning board is required to make a recommendation to council on this application and preliminary approval is required by council before the development can proceed. The background, an application was received from Home Plus Real Estate Limited, Robert E. Bear, Mid Isle Homes, uh, to subdivide this parcel into 11 lots. Two lots intended for townhouses, five lots intended for 24 unit apartment building, 
and two lots intended for two 24-unit apartment buildings. The proposed lots and proposed public street are indicated on preliminary survey plan prepared by Mantha Land Survey, Inc. Drawing number M-20-29 underscore Rev 1, dated April 2, 2020. And the uh, map is attached there of the proposed site. So the report as required under section 3.2. Six of the subdivision and site development bylaw, council, planning board, and the development officer, officer shall consider the following general criteria when reviewing development applications under this bylaw as applicable. A, conformity with this bylaw, staff comment, this subdivision promotes smart growth, making effective use of the land and applies to the principle of orderly and following. B, conformity with the official plan. Staff comment, this subdivision of land conforms to the official plan, section 5.11, and the criteria E, F, G, and H identified in the parks and green space plan, section 8-4. So the official plan, section 5.11, uh, the objective statement, uh, in that section is to promote all housing types in the city. And our policy statement uh, is to promote a sufficient diversity of housing types, residential densities and tenure options to meet varied segments of market demand. C, conformity with the zoning bylaw, staff comment, the proposed lots within the subdivision meet the criteria for high density zoning. D, the orderly and following nature of the development Staff comment, the development promotes residential growth and is an example of infilling vacant land. E, physical suitability of the site for the proposed development, including avoidance of natural hazards, undue water runoff or environmental damage. Staff comment, the site is suitable for development. The development will have no impact regarding natural hazards or environmental damage as these matters are not applicable with this development. Water runoff will be directed to city storm drainage for this development. F, compatibility of the proposed development with the present and future surrounding patterns of streets, lots, and services, including conformity with any city concept plans. Staff comment, this development promotes the pattern of streets in the area. The lots and servicing will be designed to meet city standards. The developer intends to preserve a three to four meter buffer of the existing trees around the perimeter of the property. Also, the placement of the proposed uh, parking lot is at the front of the proposed buildings in an effort to provide neighbors more privacy in their yards. The developer will concentrate on the construction of proposed streets. The two townhouses fronting McEwen Road and the two 24 unit buildings on the proposed street. The remaining lots will be developed as the market demands. G, adequacy of the applicant's proposal for traffic circulation, parking, pedestrian access, water supply, sewage disposal, and storm drainage, including the adequacy of the city streets and services to handle increased loads. Staff comment, the proposed development will have a minimal impact on the amount of traffic on McEwen Road, as McEwen Road is rated a collector street and are designed and intended to handle large volumes of traffic. The proposed residential street will be designed to meet the 50 kilometer an hour local street and the speed limit will be posted at 40 kilometers per hour. Per hour. The proposed street would have an 8.8 .8 meter width with concrete curves. The paved shoulder on the proposed uh, street will allow for safe pedestrian traffic. The city's water supply and water main lines in the area are adequate for this, the new subdivision. The developer owner will be required to install new storm drainage mains, water and sewer mains, and new service laterals will need to be installed to the property lines. The developer will will uh, have to install a sewer main along the Cuban Road in front of lot uh, 220-8 to accommodate the townhouse development. 
as there is no sewer main uh, north of Craig Avenue on the Cuban Road. All infrastructure will be designed and installed to meet the city standards at the developer's cost. Electrical servicing is available. H, suitability of parkland provisions. Stat common, parkland dedication is required for this development as a residential major subdivision. At council's discretion, the parkland shall be 10% of land or $3,500 per acre cash in lieu for low density residential land use. The area of development is 49,778 square meters, 12.3 acres. The land dedication would be uh, 4,978 square meters, 1.23 acres. And the cash in lieu value would be in, in the amount of $43,050. Staff recommend the city accept the cash in lieu as there is adequate parkland green space in the area. I, impacts on city finances and budgets. Staff comment, the parkland uh, contribution shall be put in a fund reserved solely for acquiring and expanding uh, public parks within the city. J, proof of uh, conformity with any applicable provincial legislations and regulations. Staff comment, uh, not applicable. Uh, K, other matters as considered relevant. Staff comment, the developer will provide the street name was provided the street name policy and has opted to provide a street name that is not on the approved street name list. The developer will be submitting a name for council consideration. The developer has had uh, geotechnical testing done on the site, mainly in the area of the proposed street. For the recommendation, uh, technical service staff recommend the application from Home Plus Real Estate Limited, Robert E. Bear, Maple Isle Homes, subdivide this parcel into 11 lots, two lots intended for townhouses, five lots intended for 24 unit apartment buildings, and two lots intended for two 24 unit apartment buildings be rec uh, recommended to be approved by council, subject to the following. One, the developer shall satisfy all municipal servicing requirements. Two, the developer satisfy the parkland dedication requirement. Three, the developer enters into a subdivision construction agreement. As for section 8.5 of the subdivision site development bylaw, the planning board shall make a recommendation to council on this application before it is approved or denied. The planning board recommendation, whether carried or defeated, will be brought forward for council for a final decision. So the planning board recommendation, this application bears the recommendation of planning board. And I would call for a mover and a seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Adams, second by Councillor Ramsey. And we will open the floor for questions. Mr. Chairman, a couple of questions. Certainly, Your Worship. I'm just wondering, I'm trying to follow this here. It says nine lots in the first paragraph and the second paragraph says 11 lots. I'm just wondering about that. And uh, were the neighbors in the area notified about this planning board meeting today. And uh, I'm just wondering how many apartment units would this be in total? I'm just trying to total the thing up, but I'm separating the nine lots, to the 11 lots. And are there buildings on McEwen Road? A lot of questions there. But... Yeah, there is, uh, there is some townhouses on McEwen Road. Well, that's 11 lots. Uh... Oh, by the drawing, the building. You know, two lots intended for townhouses. Three. Three for townhouses? Okay. Three. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Stevenson. Just clarity on the nine lots versus 11. Nine lots in uh, paragraph one versus the 11 lots in paragraph two there. Right. It's, it is nine lots. It's a typo on the second paragraph. Uh, so it is nine lots. Oh, it's a lot, yeah. okay. And then I was just wondering about uh, were the do the neighbors have to be notified, or were they notified about the planning board meeting today? There's no requirement. Uh, the, the zoning is R four, so it's zoned for that. So there is no requirement for it to have a. We would never require a public meeting, and uh, being as land is, is zoned appropriately, there's no need to have an open house or have you. 
Okay, thank you. And then one more quick summation, Mr. Chairman, then I'm finished. I'm just trying to total up, but now we've got it down in nine lots. What's that in, in apartment units in the, the complex? Because if so, I'm asking that of the answer. Because I was trying to sort it out so many for 24 units and so many for. So we have two lots intended for townhouses, five lots intended for 24 unit apartment buildings. That would be uh, one of those per lot and two lots intended for two 24 unit apartment buildings. Well, the townhouses, how many houses? How many in each lot there for the townhouses? Are there the four plaques or three plaques? Or plaques? They look like five plexes on the diagram. Can you confirm oh. that? Uh, so currently on the plan you have in front of you, there are two townhouses along the Hewen Road with five units each. There's 216 units in total. Okay. Thank, thank you. Councillor uh, Snow? So is this the property that Councillor uh, Campbell has been asking questions about? Is that this area? Yes. For two, for two yeah. years. Yeah. So Councillor Campbell, you had your hand up? Yeah. Well, there'd be no reason why there or any reason for the public to be there. I've been Councillor in the area and I've tried for two years to get some information on the project and couldn't get anything and you, you can use the excuse it's it's already uh, it's already zoned for fine that's it that opens it up for everything but it's awful for similar to the the development we turned down out in st Helens. it looks to be not even bigger than that so there and, and i've gone from door to door and none of the residents know what's going on in fact, the question started, I've started being asked some questions about the development when there was a survey done two years ago. They put the pins in. They were asking what was happening and then I started to ask at that time and still never got an answer. So this this is- so it, It's taken me by surprise. So certainly the heck has taken the residents by surprise. Yeah. So I think this is sort of the first phase in the process. It's the first time that any of us have really seen what the development would look like to the planning board and our, our present regulations, as I understand them, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, it, it's already zoned R4 and uh, that the process is it. it needs and it was zoned R4 for something quite different that was being presented here today. That's why, why as, as a council, we shouldn't be granting these zone fours without knowing exactly what's going to be put in that place. So this was supposed, supposed to be a, a, a single dwelling home with a place for horses at one time, I think, when it was zoned level four. Yeah, I, I, it'd be long before my time, I think it's... Uh, and, and mine. Yeah, it was zoned uh, some time ago, I think, R4. Mr. Mr. Chairman, it's Aaron here. The uh, property was zoned R4 since uh, 1998, at least. I came in 97. Uh, in R4, they could have put, any owner could put, put in single family or any type of housing up to R4. Uh, in this case, we only met with the developer representative in the last couple of months. At that time, they were investigating what options they could do for development on this particular site. At which time they asked for, to go in and clear a road, do some geotechnical work so they could actually see what was going to cost them to actually uh, come up with a proposal. Whenever we got the proposal from them, uh, it, it uh, staff reviewed it for the, and the next step is what we're here before, is if they choose to subdivide. If they were not going to subdivide it and put it in a private street, we would not even be here. It is an as of right to build up to R4 for the last 20 years. So I think, uh, uh, Councillor McDougall. But there's a heck of a lot more respect could have been shown to the councillor and the residents of the area. I don't give a darn what the zone was. Okay, I, I appreciate your position on that, Councillor, but I want to give other councillors the opportunity to, uh, to have a voice. So, Councillor McDougall. You're muted. You're muted, uh, Councillor. You're, you're muted, Councillor. Okay, I got it. Right, no, I, just wanted, I just wanted to clarify a point uh, 
Councillor Campbell, the one in St. Eleanor's was going for a rezoning. This one here has already been rezoned. So I just wanted to clarify that. Mm -hmm. uh, Deputy Mayor. I believe Councillor Corey was up before me. You can go ahead, Norma, it's fine. I'm sorry, I didn't see you, Councillor. It, it, it's all right, go ahead, Norma. Okay, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, I guess, uh, again, I want to point out, uh, certainly the city, I'm not against development. I think it's great and we're open for business, but we have learned some lessons along the way. And I just want to ask the question I noticed in your commentary that it says that uh, other developments will take place on that property as the market demands. And I am wondering if that is the is that going to be the 24 units or what parcel or what plan is that for? And second point B to that question is, is there any timeline on the development? Like from the shovel in the ground, if, if it should go forward until the time that at least the first one or two parcels are ready to, to be ready for people. That was my understanding from the preliminary there that the the initial in the initial uh, investment would be I'm trying to find it here would be around the uh, townhouses and one of one or two of the apartment buildings and then yeah. as the demand so I don't know about the timeline on that okay. uh, I guess uh, mr. chairman why I'm asking is, I, I think, you know, we're, we're just learning some lessons about long-term yeah. development and waiting. And from here on in, I am going to be asking those kinds of questions so that we don't end up with a very long duration of waiting. But I, it sounds like a good development. Thank you. Understood. I don't know if staff have any additional information to add to that. Uh, this this is the first step in the process planning board. Uh, we will go to council on the next council meeting. And from that date, they have 12 months to start construction under this approval. Um, right. Expect that it'll move forward as, as you know, construction season approaches here. So they plan to start immediately. Thank so you. May I ask, just may I ask to that as a rebuttal. Um, so with that coming forward then, uh, does that mean that development could take a long time to see it come to full completion? Or is it something that, you know, whatever, whatever takes place in the process, we will have an idea of what the proposed, if it's going to be, you know, one year, three years, five years, that sort of thing. Would we know that from the developer? So, so the developer's intention is to do the units along the Cuban Road at this time in the first two buildings in on the street and the street will yes. be there as well. As uh, probably over the next three, four years, then the rest of the buildings will go in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Snow, I apologize. No, no, it's it's all good. Thank you, uh, Councillor McFeely. Uh, Sort of on Norma's and Cam, uh, Councillor Campbell's question, same line. Uh, so when this was rezoned back in 98, 97, if, if it was intended for a horse ranch or whatever, where, where do we, how can we police that? So if we have people coming forward, developers saying, I'm gonna rezone this land, uh, and the intent was something totally different, but now we're into apartment buildings and, and at the time maybe council wouldn't have, it, it, I just see it as a sort of a roundabout way to get things done. I mean, not that that was the intent here. I assume it's probably a different owner from back in 97, 98, but it, it creates a, some hesitance to move ahead with development to Councillor McCollman's point if there's not a, you know, an intended plan that has a time frame that sees an end date instead of we're going to rezone it and then it doesn't come to fruition, would it not revert back to the original just to sort of avoid these types of I think that's uh, a, zoning problems? That's a valid question and uh, something we, we, we may need to, to, to give further thought to. I think that there's been three or four opportunities along the way for people to look at that zoning, like when we did the official plan, the approval of the official plan, uh, there was opportunity there for councils, individual councils. 
look in their wards and if there was something they weren't happy with around zoning that they could have done as part of that official plan approval process. Uh, going forward, uh, I think, you know, having a requirement that they they build, uh, you know, that be some activity within the year of the approval or, and I don't know what the existing wording is there in the bylaw, but we, you know, may need to put more teeth in there that it reverts back to whatever its previous owning was if it doesn't, you know. It, it would just, it, I think, it would, I, I think it would save a lot of, you know, sitting on properties and speculating and, you know, we're seeing some of the negative impacts of that. So, um, I think I think it would be an important thing to look at down the road, especially as we have uh, rezoning applications and and I'm all for development, believe me. And and I, I think it's great that we're seeing so much development and growth within our city. But there comes a point where you need to be a little bit cautious that people just aren't uh, uh, playing it and getting ahead of the game a little bit and speculating. So. Well, I'm sure. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Renzi has a. Yeah, I just, sure. I just think um, my opinion on this is that we need to be sensitive to the developer. He bought this as an R4 zone, so he bought it with intentions of doing some work for Summerside and putting some much needed housing in there. And um, I think, you know, anything that we think as councillors, as Brian said, that we need to like maybe look through our own wards and find out if things are zoned where we, we don't think it's appropriate, we should deal with it then. I don't know that it's appropriate to deal with it now with the with the um, with the contractors here or the developers here. I, I just I that's just my opinion on this. But thank you guys. Your worship. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Bruce, you may be able to remember as well, but I think that may have been a fox ranch at the time, or horses may have been in the area, but uh, I remember when the new city was formed shortly afterwards that uh, th this is not a rezoning. I'm not sure if it was zoned anything at the time. And at the time, uh, that's what I, I, there was no other development in behind in that area, I don't think, at the time. I'm trying to remember 25 years ago. But well, I uh, think it was during the uh, uh, the official plan at that time where we went through and we rezoned a whole lot of areas. And I think. This and and we've had two or three reviews of the official plan since then, but uh, uh, I don't remember the I, I I shouldn't say that don't remember the horse farm, but uh, I okay. I always understood that that was for uh, uh, a higher density area where the wooded area was. So and uh, with with all the official plans, I think it's been on there for, since for for quite a while now. So yeah, thank you. Um, I guess from, from my perspective, as I read through this earlier, uh, one question I have, what I'd like to try to ensure is that we, if, and I don't know what authority, if any, we have to be able to protect the privacy of the folks who would be bordering on this. And I know the developer is looking at a three to four meter buffer zone in there, and the trees are significantly high. I think it would provide that, that, uh, uh, buffer and privacy, I, I would hope. Uh, I'm not sure that we have any authority to enforce that or if it's just a, uh, a, a, a offering from the developer uh, to, uh, as a good neighbor, to provide that privacy to his, to his neighbors. So, uh, Ms. Stevenson, I don't know if uh, any, or Aaron, if, if, if we have any ability to be able to, uh, to uh, force that, or is it more of a, of a neighborly thing to do? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I guess as the report stated, the applicant has looked to try and be a good neighbor. It's, you, as you state, it's not a requirement to provide a buffer next to a residential against residential. They're trying to maintain a buffer for themselves to provide that. As it was noted, they also tried to look at where they could situate their buildings and not have the parking lots back against the abutting properties. So they have cars and garbage trucks and everything moving around at all hours for access to the apartments, but put the actual dwelling units back closer to the existing buildings and leave the parking lots and stuff out. So they've tried to do a couple things that they are not required to do to try and make it uh, compatible yeah. with the existing neighborhood. Yeah, and I'm really pleased to see that in there that, uh, that mm -hmm. they're really making attempts to be neighborly and, and, and to do the right things with the neighbors. So. 
Any other questions or comments? Are we ready, planning board ready to, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor? I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to, to make a point, uh, just being very aware that the contractors and the applicants are observing. I guess I, I, I just want to make sure that, you know, again, to reiterate that people know that we're, we're definitely not against development or anything like that. But I would also, if they're watching, want them to know that their council, they are also residents too. And as a council, we do have to ask some of those harder questions because we know our residents have asked them to us. So um, I just want to clarify that we're not against development and, and that's why we're asking in the public part of this meeting so that people know. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? I don't understand that there there be nothing written in, around the the neighbors of the place will I have to go door to door and inform them when it, it's time for them to say a few words about the development. They're not automatically mailed out. A, no, that's not required in the present, presently required in the bylaw, Councillor Campbell. That's only uh, if there was to be a rezoning, then there would be a mail out, but uh, there's no rezoning here. So the way they're going to learn is watching YouTube at, at 12 o'clock on a Tuesday. Are, are in the media, are, you know, if you if you choose as, as the councillor to inform them. Okay. But there would, uh, you know. And, the media, and that'll be the next council meeting? The media would report on on, uh, on this. Not the uh, committee of council, it'll be the council meeting. Uh, this will go to council. The date hasn't been set yet. Would it be possible to get the date at that time? Or is that private knowledge too? I don't think that's private knowledge. I just don't think there's been the. Uh, we're hoping to figure out a date today, Councillor. I think they were looking at one time on the 20th. Thursday, the 26th. 28th, excuse me, the 28th. But we haven't established. Uh, my understanding is there hasn't been. Uh, uh, the date hasn't been finalized, the time finalized yet. Just, I just wanted to add excuse me, a comment on the, in regards to uh, Councillor Snow's comment earlier, it, it was, it was uh, and, and uh, follow up to Councillor McDougall's as well, it was reviewed in the 1998 review of the zoning bylaw, and that is the date that that zoning was changed. Uh, there has been nothing on the lands uh, since then that has been proposed. And I think one of the hardships of that piece of land was the, uh, the difference in grade from the street. So it was felt at the time it was uh, the, the logic, I guess, behind that rezoning was that you'd have to have something higher density to make that a feasible development. Um, and the other thing is the, uh, the tree line that the developer is going to uh, make uh, efforts to uh, to keep in place, uh, they are also going to uh, clear brush there. And if, if there are places where there's not a lot of trees, uh, they will replant some uh, trees to try to continue, keep that buffer there. And other uh, property owners um, along Walker Avenue had taken advantage over that land in the years too. So some of it was cleared by some of those residents at some point. So just a little bit of history on the background of that. Thank you for that, Linda. Okay, any other questions or comments? Uh, if not, we will call the vote of planning board. Uh, we have the recommendation in front of us, so all those in favor say aye. 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 Contrary? Unanimous support? So the recommendation will go to council and we will establish that date and make sure everybody's aware of it. Thank you. So Thank you. Sure. Unanimous. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, the next thing on the uh, agenda is uh, a zoning amendment for uh, 365 Water Street. The Supporting explanation, the purpose, the purpose of the zoning amendment is to allow an apartment building development. The applicant is proposing apartment buildings with underground parking. 
Apartment building means a building containing more than two dwelling units, except the row house and townhouse as defined in this Bible. Background, an application was initiated by the uh, city of Summerside, uh, represented by Mike Tatuska for a portion of PID number 68742 to amend the city zoning bylaw from medium density residential R3 zone to high density residential R4 zone. The public meeting was held on May 20th, 2020, and the council gave first reading on the same day. The report under section 5.7 of the zoning bylaw, when planning board reviews a zoning bylaw amendment, it has to consider the following general criteria as applicable. A, conformity with all requirements of this bylaw. Staff comment, if council approves the zoning map amendment from R3 to R4, the applicant will be permitted to construct an apartment building subject to the R4 development standards. B, conformity with the official plan. Staff comment, the rezoning conforms to the official plan section 5.1.1 residential zones. The objective statement, uh, object objective there is to promote all housing types in the city. The policy statement, uh, two policy statements, promote a sufficient diversity of housing types, residential densities, and 10-year options to meet varied segments and market demand. And two, require that all housing be connected to community water and sewer services, except that where it is impractical to make connections in an agricultural zone. On-site servicing may be utilized in compliance with minimum lot size requirements under the PEI Planning Act regulations. C, suitability to site for proposed development. Staff comment, this 4.14 uh, site, uh, that should be acre site, is suitable for high density residential land use. A public street and municipal services are available for this development. D, compatibility of the proposed development uh, with surrounding land uses, including both existing and projected uses. Staff comment, the subject property abuts a number of uses. The land use to the immediate east is R3, along with the C2 and C3 property. The north boundary abuts M1, light industrial, the south boundary abuts parkland and the west boundary of the property abuts con conservation zoning. Uh, it's a stream with uh, R4 on the other side of the conservation zoning. There is a non-conforming salvage yard, Island Enterprise Limited within R4 zone. The subject property was zoned downtown commercial under the town of Summerside zoning bylaw. The land was rezoned as part of the zoning bylaw in 1998. There are two other R4 zone developments within close proximity. The proposed development would be a natural transition from R3 to R4 with Greenwood Drive acting as a buffer between the two zones. And the map is attached there. Any comments from residents and other interested people? Staff comment, a public meeting was held on May 20th, 2020. The public meeting notice was advertised in the May 9th edition of The Guardian. 16 letters were mailed to 24 property owners. Mike Tatuska provided an explanation and slideshow of the development. Highland Enterprises Limited, seven, uh, 578 Notre Dame Street, Robert Arsenal sent a written comment uh, indicating he held a neutral position on the application, but expressed his concerns in uh, written comment. Kim G Gallant Chahib, uh, 23 uh, Greenwood Drive, submitted written comments regarding the site being a former marsh area. Ms. Gallant also mentioned the site being a green space slash parking area for events in the West End of the city. The concerns are also addressed throughout this report. An email was received from Christine Kenny and Chris Summers to Rufus Street on Thursday, May 21st, 2020. And this was uh, received within the time uh, deadline for written comments. Uh, uh, Ms. Kenny and Mr. Summers expressed concerns regarding the dirt and dust that will be created during the construction phase, leading them to use their main deck. The written comments were read at the public meeting 
and are attached in this report. Adequacy of, uh, of existing uh, water, sewer, road, storm water, and electrical services. City parking and park plans for, accommodating, uh, for accommodating the development and any other uh, projected uh, infrastructure requirements. Staff comment, the lot in question has water and sewer mains on the north side, South Drive, and sewer main to the east uh, Green, on Greenwood Drive, and only a water main on the South Drive from McKenzie Drive west to Water Street. Any subdividing of this property other than on South Drive will require extension of the water and sewer mains. Storm water would be collected on the site and connected to the city storm drainage system. The site will provide a site parking, uh, will provide on site or in site parking for the development. Park land dedication is not required as there is no subdivision of lands. There is ample park land across the street on the waterfront. Uh, electrical servicing can be provided. Gee, impacts uh, from the development on pedestrian vehicular access and safety and on public safety generally. Staff comment, the proposed change in zoning from R3 to R4 will have minimal impact on the amount of the uh, of traffic in the area. Two of the streets surrounding this property, South Drive and Water Street, are, are all rated as collector streets and are designed intended to handle large volumes of traffic from multiple local streets, one of which is Greenwood Drive. The current R3 zoning could allow multiple uncontrolled access points to Greenwood Drive and Water Street. If the property is developed R4 as one larger property, it could be limited to one or two controlled access points to Greenwood Drive and Water Street, which would be safer than having multiple accesses along both streets. There is an existing sidewalk along the east side of Greenwood Drive and a crosswalk at the intersection of Greenwood Drive and Water Street which connects with the boardwalk along the waterfront. <clears throat> H, compatibility of the development with environmental, scenic and heritage resources. Staff comment, a buffer area has been identified by the PI Department of Environment. The buffer area is as a result of existing water course along the west boundary of the property. No construction is permitted within the buffer area. The potential developer has incorporated the existing environmental buffer into their design concept that the developer, developer appreciates the potential in the natural environmental features along the existing stream. Impacts of the city's finances and budget. Staff comment, not applicable. Other matters as specified by this bylaw, there's nothing there. Other matters as considered relevant, staff comment. In written comments received by, uh, from Kim Ch Chaheb, uh, she mentioned that the site in the past had been utilized for parking for events at Green Shores. The property was never intended for a parking lot. A parking lot would not be effective use of this waterfront property. Furthermore, a parking lot is not a permitted use under current R3 zoning. Within 300 meters of Green Shore, there is parking available. 800 spaces at Credit Union Place plus Sound Street parking along Water Street. There were some questions regarding the geotechnical testing that will be carried out on site and if the information would be made public. Geotechnical investigations are performed by engineers to obtain physical properties of soil for proposed structures. In most cases, the geotechnical investigation is required as part of the building site design. Monitoring of construction sites to control and remediate dirt and dust during construction phase are not required under the zoning bylaw. Recommendation, technical services staff recommend the application initiated by the city of Summerside, represented by Mike Tatuska, for a portion of PID number 68742 to amend the city of zoning bylaw from medium density residential R3 zone to high density residential R4 zone be recommended to be approved by council. As per section 5.10 B3 of the zoning bylaw, the planning board shall make a recommendation to council on this application before it is approved or denied. The planning board recommendation when carried or defeated will be brought forward to council for final decision. And the uh, written submissions are included there. I don't think there's 
any requirement uh, to read those into the public forum? Oh, yes, from Miss Kenny. Not sure I have that one here. Huh? You do have a copy right there, right? So the one that hasn't been read into the record and we are reading into the record, uh, the other two are, are on the public record, is from uh, Christine Kenny and Chris Summers. And it's dated, uh, in an, it's an email dated uh, May 21st, 2020 at 3.38 p.m. Uh, hi, Ms. Stevenson. I am writing in regards to the City of Summerside Council meeting on, on uh, May 20th, 2020, discussing the rezoning of 565 Water Street. The plan presented seems to indicate a construction project of five buildings with a time frame that potentially stretches over multiple years, up to five. We would like to express concern over the possible impact. There was a past occurrence in this potential impact last year during rib fest when the top layer of grass on this exact property was removed for temporary parking. Due to the onshore winds, the situation created an untenable dust storm covering our property in dirt and dust and impeding use of our main deck. Due to the size and scope of this project, we are requesting the city and the builder outline what the specific plans are to control and remediate this problem during construction phase. And if the city will monitor and enforce so as to allow us to continue enjoyment of our property. We would also like to receive uh, confirmation that the city is requiring the final project to be completed as per the proposed landscape design in the parking lot area. If altered from the plans presented, it would negatively impact the aesthetics of the property and and the properties in the surrounding area. Thanks so much for soliciting input in this manner, Christine Kenny and Chris Summers. So we have uh, read that into the record and now I guess we will uh, call for uh, a mover in a second and then we'll open the floor for questions and discussion. So uh, planning board, Councillor Adams will move the resolution, uh, Your Worship. Second. Second. Uh, we will now open the floor for yeah. questions and discussion. Councillor Snow. Uh, this, this sort of goes back to the one where the development we were talking about earlier. Uh, just the question that just came in there. What are our, uh, what can we do to make sure that the development goes ahead as presented. Is there anything we can put in place to make sure that happens? So to the points earlier, a uh, plan comes ahead with, you know, drawing ideas of what we're going to do, but then a lot of it's depending on the market and what happens down the road, whether or not you end up with as many buildings in the layout. So if the developer uh, that has given his idea for developing hip and stall corner uh, changes his mind after he builds unit number one or uh, is, is there any recourse there or basically we're just saying okay go ahead it's now rezoned for uh, our four but we can we cannot uh, make sure that he follows the uh, plan that he put in place or he is the idea that he has given us there's a whole lot in there and I'm sort of gibbering. I realize that, but I, I'm trying to figure uh, out how to best to ask it. In normal circumstances, when a property is owned there for, then there's a whole bunch of permitted uses and you no, know, there's not much recourse we have after that. But in this case, the city of Summerside is the property owner. And as council is aware, we, you know, we intend to enter into a development agreement with, with a developer. Um, so within that agreement, the city of Summerside and council will have, uh, you know, the final say in terms of what what items you want in the development agreement and how that development moves forward. Right. So, in this in this instance, because we own the property, yes, there's more there's more tools we have in our toolbox. 
So, so the last residence question that came in regarding the current layout that's presented to council um, in that development agreement, we can make sure that the development goes ahead as presented if we put it in the development agreement. Correct. Okay. We can put the restrictions in the agreement. We can also probably address in that development agreement the concerns around the remediation of other issues during construction. Right. Th thank you, Chair. I should uh, acknowledge that uh, CAO Philpott has joined us for the uh, for the record as well. Deputy Mayor, you're you're uh, muted, uh, Deputy Mayor. Yeah. My apologies. I was just giving a wave to CAO. <laughs> oh, <laughs> second auction. <laughs> Don't put your hand up. Any other comments or questions? Very done. We will call for the vote of the planning board uh, on the recommendation. You've heard the recommendation. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. So the recommendation will go forth to uh, council once we establish that date and time. And the final thing on our agenda today is the street naming for 493 McEwen Road subdivision. Find it here in my notes. Okay. okay street name, public street. Uh, supporting explanation, purpose, the name of the, uh, to name a public street off McEwen Road. Uh, background, the owner, developer, Home Plus Real Estate Limited wishes to propose the name, a name that is not on the approved street name list. The proposed name for the public street is Foxland. Uh, the street suffix will be court, so the Foxland Court. The proposed name is to honor the Fox industry and the Fox ranches that were located in this area. The map is attached that shows the roadway going in that would be, uh, that would be named Foxland Court. Uh, the report as required under the emergency 911 Act, the city is a designated municipality and responsible for assigning civic addresses. A public road must be named if it provides access to three or more improved properties. As per Schedule B street naming policy of the site development and subdivision, any person who wishes to uh, use a name that is not on the approved street name list shall make application to council and council shall approve or deny by simple resolution. Uh, the proposed street name Foxland is being forwarded to the planning board for their review and recommendation. The planning board recommendation, whether carried or defeated, will be brought forward for council for a final decision. Um, so the planning board recommendation, this application bears the recommendation of the planning board. So we would call for a mover and a seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Ramsey, seconded by Councillor Adams. And we'll open the floor for any questions or comments or... As mentioned earlier, Mr. Chairman, I remember back in the 70s and 80s when doing police work in that area was a Fox, former Fox ranch, I, I had mentioned that earlier. So I'm just wondering with the Silver Fox Curling and Club and the Silver Fox Inn and this Fox Lane, uh, will that pass the standards for EMO or whatever? I, I get no problem with the name, but I'm just wondering, uh, I guess Linda would probably have to get that approval. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we have, uh, I have uh, sent that on to emergency 911 and there is no conflict with uh, any area, anything in the area, any streets in the buddy uh, municipalities. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Adams has a question or comment? I just have one uh, quick comment um, because we do um, have our street naming committee and that's been brought up before about um, ensuring that we take recommendations from there when possible. Um, but I do think that this is somewhat um, is something appropriate for um, the history of the area, especially. So um, I'm not on uh, a member of the street naming committee, but um, I assume, or I would 
I can see where they would see this as probably something that would, would be suitable. So, um, yeah. yeah. As the uh, street naming committee is now uh, eliminated, so it doesn't exist anymore. But as, as, as the chair of that committee, I know there was significant research put into into that list of 40 some odd names, I think it is that developers can choose from. And it, it's a fine balance between the developer and the person who's putting the money into the project, uh, their wishes and needs and our want and need to preserve sort of the, our, our, our heritage. Most of those names are around heritage. I think there's three or four of those names that were Fox in one, one of the industries that we highlighted in that street name work was the Fox industry and there was three or four names there. So I, I, I do have concerns that since that work was done, there's been three or four streets named and none of them have been drawn from the list that the research was done. So, uh, you know, I don't know how we do that or whether we can provide incentives to developers to use those names. Um, uh, I'm not sure what the answer, I don't have an issue with, with this one, I, um, but I, I'm really concerned that you know, we had three or four volunteers from the city spend many, many hours um, doing work around street names and that uh, we, we, we don't seem to be using that list. So I'm a little concerned about that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Randy. Okay. I just, um, I just, I really like the name and, and personally, I think it doesn't include our heritage. So um, because of the because it is Fox Land, and, and, you know, and, and, and I know what you're saying too, Brian, but I, I just really, I, I kind of think that was a unique name to come up with for that area. I just want to say that. Okay. Any other questions or comments, Your Worship? Just, uh, and I agree with what you just said there, uh, Councillor McDealy, but I would like to see this, uh, as mentioned, I think, at our last meeting, I'd like to see this come to Council for a resolution to have it officially in the minutes, and uh, so it would be recorded that 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 let council approve the name that's been uh, presented. And uh, and uh, there could be some uh, the historical society or somebody may want to comment on it, but I think all street names should be approved or uh, officially resolution to council. So this, this will go as a resolution to council based on the re recommendation of planning boards. Thank Councilor you. Campbell, you had your hand up. I just said, uh, there's an old saying, Sly is a fox. I might have something to say about our developers. Oh. Well, I'm not sure that's a, oh. a comment that we need at, at, at this point in time. But anyways, we will uh, we will call for the uh, the vote on the recommendation. Um, any other questions or comments? Are we ready for the question? Question. All those in favor of the resolution, signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary? Motion carried unanimously. So that concludes uh, the agenda for planning board. Uh, I would welcome a motion of adjournment. Moved by Councillor Ramsey, seconded by your worship, Mayor Stewart. We are adjourned.